Hey guys, it's Steve from Featherlight, and today we are checking out the brand new CM1 Mic Booster from Clark Technic. Now this is obviously meant to compete directly against the Cloudlifter products. We wanna find out, does this thing even come close? Let's check it out and find out. All right, so this little guy is a mic preamp a super simple mic preamp, and it adds about 20, 25 dB of gain to microphones that have notoriously low output like the Shure SM7B and ribbon microphones. So that would be a really useful little tool, especially at this price point, if it can compete directly with the Cloudlifter products. So we need to find out, does this add significant amount of noise to the signal chain? And the only way to find that out is to come up with a really definitive test something that without a doubt will let us know if this is adding too much noise to the signal to be of any real use to us, or is this something that we can actually count on? The CM1 is designed to compete directly against Cloudlifter's CL1, both in design and in build quality, and that is excellent on both of these devices. Just like the CL1, it has an XLR input and output connection, as well as rubberized feet on the bottom of the chassis. The CM1, like the Cloudlifter, requires 48 volt phantom power from your audio interface or your mixer to operate. Clark Technic suggests that you use a fairly short mic cable to make the jump from the microphone to the unit. This is because it's amplifying the signal, so just like the cloud lifter, it could potentially be amplifying anything like power supplies and power cables that might be nearby as well. So we're going to start inside our isolation booth here, and this is going to help to kind of minimize all of the ambient noise floor that you would hear in a regular room, like appliances and air conditioning, that kind of stuff. And we're also going to start with our notoriously low output SM7B. Now this is like a ribbon mic or any other dynamic that is really known for being low output. This is so low output that when I first got it, I thought it was broken. So it takes about 60, 65 dB for this to operate efficiently. And the problem with that is it means that most of the audio interfaces we'd plug it into or mixers, they would be run wide open. But those electronics and those potentiometers were never designed to be efficient, run completely wide open. So that's where this guy comes into play. If we just recorded a vocal, for example, and then we stuck this in the signal chain and we recorded another vocal, and then afterwards tried to line it back up in the DAW, that'd be a totally subjective test. Meaning the difference between the two as who tried to eyeball the two wave shapes could easily account for the noise that this looked like it may or may not be adding. We need a definitive test. So we're gonna generate a test tone through the monitor. And that's simply gonna go through this signal chain and nothing else. And then the only thing we're gonna do on the second round is we're gonna add this to the equation. And then we're gonna take those two and line them back up in the DAW. But because there's test tones, we can line them up identically. And what we're after is the difference between the two. First, we're going to make the connections to our mixer board, which has incredibly clean preamps and 60 dB of gain. But in order to achieve that, the gain knob has to be completely maxed out. Then we're going to check our level on our channel meters and then again on our main LEDs. Each track will be metered and recorded on the main LEDs here at the same level with none of the additional mixer features engaged like the EQ, as we don't want that to play into any of our tests. First up is our 1K test tone for six seconds broadcast out of our studio monitors straight into our SM7B, and then from there straight into the audio interface, followed by an additional six seconds of silence, and this will allow us to make our noise floor comparisons. While we're at the same level set here on our mixer board, we're gonna also take a six second sample of pink noise generation. This is gonna allow us to compare the equalization curves or differences of them with the SM7B dry recording and the one that includes the CM1 mic booster. Now it's time to add the CM1 to the equation. We're gonna disconnect the old line and then we're gonna add the CM1 mic booster in line, making sure that it's not next to any power cables or power lines. Then we're gonna engage the 48 volt phantom power for the channel. And then we're gonna reset the gain knob now that the incoming signal is considerably louder. We're gonna test that against the channel LEDs and we're gonna check that same measurement on the mains LEDs, which provides a much longer and more detailed readout of our incoming level. Now it's time to repeat our test like we did before, but with the CM1 mic booster in line and the additional level, the same 1K test tone followed by the same six seconds of silence that allows us to compare the noise floors. While we have all of our new levels set, we're gonna follow up the same test with the pink noise sample as well. This is gonna allow us to compare the EQ curves 
of the two different signals. All right, so we're back here in our DAW. We've cleaned up some of the start times and reordered the tracks to make the comparison a little clearer. We've got our SM7B dry track on the top here, and then we've got the CM1 mic booster track on the bottom. You'll also notice that for each track, we've added two incredibly accurate meters. And more importantly, those meters are in mono. And the reason for that is that some DAWs will add as much as a 3 dB difference, depending on which of the panning laws they happen to be using. We don't want that to factor into our test. So even though we've gone to great pains to make sure that each one of our recorded tracks was metered correctly and at the same level when we recorded into our audio interface, you'll notice when we play them back, they're still not identical. And this is because when we recorded them, we were still in the world of analog. When we record into our audio interfaces or our mixers, we're still dealing with analog signal. It means we can get close, but it's never gonna be exact. And that's because we don't have complete digital control over it. To accomplish that, we're gonna go up to our audio menu and we're gonna use the normalization feature. We're gonna set this particular track to negative 20 dB. So now when we play the top track back, it's gonna play back at a perfect negative 20 dB level. We're gonna do the same thing to our bottom track here, and we're gonna set its maximum peak level to the exact same level. Now when these two tracks are played back, the top dry track and the bottom track with the CM1 added now play back at identical levels. This would be impossible to achieve in the analog realm simply because there's too many variables. All right, so now that we've aligned each one of the tracks and their identical levels, it's time to hear the difference between the two tracks as far as the noise floor. So we're gonna move our meters out of the way. The test tones have allowed us to get an incredibly accurate test. So we've set up a loop over here on the right-hand side of the meters. We're gonna play it back and measure our results. And as you can see, there's about a dB of difference with the CM1 mic booster added to the track. Long story short, our SM7B with the CM1 mic booster attached to it is clearly not adding significant noise to the signal path, about a dB, which means it competes directly with the cloud lifter for its rated specs. And that's pretty impressive or anything in this price category. All right, so now it's time to move on to the pink noise test. This is where we're gonna be able to check if there's any major differences between the equalization response by using the CM1 mic booster. On the top, we got our SM7B dry track, and on the bottom here, we have our SM7B with the CM1 mic booster, and we've set up our levels to be identical like we did with the 1K test tones, and now we need to change our metering system. So we've swapped out our peak meter analyzers for spectrum curve analyzers, and these guys are gonna allow us to detect any differences between the two tracks and see any equalization response differences between them. So let's start some playback. And as you can see, these are about as close as two random noise samples could be. There doesn't appear to be any significant frequency response difference between the two tracks with the CM1 mic booster added and with the dry track direct. So long story short, the same thing applies here. The CM1 mic booster added to the signal chain doesn't appear to significantly change the frequency response at all. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what this will and won't do. It's not gonna make a cheap mic into an expensive one. It's not gonna change your dynamic range. It's not gonna affect the signal to noise ratio. It's just gonna make it louder, but it is gonna give you 25 dB of clean gain with only about a one dB noise penalty. That means we can run our mixer inputs and our audio interface inputs back down into the sweet spots of those devices. Now, if you got big expensive console inputs, then you got no worries. But like the bulk of consumer input gear, this thing could be a real lifesaver, especially at this price point, because this competes directly against the Cloudlifter and Fethead products, and it does it really well. It doesn't suck. So if you're looking for an alternative to those, this should definitely be on your short list. Hey, if you learned something or if this was helpful in any way, please remember to hit the subscription and notification bells. Stay safe. We'll catch you guys in the next video.